Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Fitz. Welcome to a Hartford Regionals uh, team report. Uh, I haven't done any of these before, uh, so bear with me. Hopefully, um, hopefully it's all right. Hopefully we can get to the, everything pretty quickly. Uh, if you have any suggestions for me uh, from how the video looks to um, you know the flow and pacing of it, just let me know, and uh, hopefully we can improve these for the future. Um, so. Um, basically, I haven't played many ROM hacks in the past couple of weeks and haven't posted videos because I was preparing for Hartford Regionals, among other commitments. Um, but I hadn't been to a regional in uh, almost a year. I went to Philly last year and I wanted to do well here. So I did do um, probably more prep than I've ever done, uh, which doesn't mean a lot since I still have you know work commitments and stuff. Um, but this team was able to finish top 32 out of 100 plus at Hartford, which is good for championship points um, towards Worlds. Obviously, I'm, I'm very far away from the invite. This was my first uh, LAN CP. So uh, it was really exciting nonetheless. Um, really fun to... Uh, really good battles that I had, really great sets. And just an overall fun time. Uh, if a regional or local event is ever near you, it's definitely something that you should check out if you haven't done before. Um, but basically the idea, um, the flow is going to be, I'm going to post the QR code link if you want to play yourself on Battlespot right here. And I'll also put the paste down below in the description. And then we're going to go over my team, um, kind of the idea I had around it, uh, how the team came together. Um, and we'll uh, take a look at my seven opponents, how the sets went really quick. I'm not going to give away too much of their information if they're holding it for a future um, tournament, but um, just a quick overview of their teams. So um, just to jump right into it, um, this is my own team. So um, you can see we have Necrozma Duskmane, which will uh, Ultra Burst into Ultra Necrozma. We have Primal Groudon. We have Tapu Lele. Uh, Choice Scarfed, and we have Excelgore, which always pairs well with Tapu Lele. Mega Aerodactyl, which is crazy, and then an even crazier one in Zerkatry. So we're just going to start from the first three, uh, really how the team came together. So um, Ultra Necrozma has kind of been poo-hooed at the beginning of Ultra Series. Uh, a lot of people were against it and thinking it's kind of overrated. Um, but Psychic Spam teams do really well and uh, that kind of showed at Hartford uh, even though the Cosmo wasn't seen a ton in top cut it did win the event overall uh, by Tommy Kuleen so he was using the Dawn Wings version um, and using a special uh, Necrozma but he had the choice scarf Tapu Lele with it um, I thought um, that Primal Groudon was a really nice uh, partner Pokemon for it uh, since kind of handles um, you know, some of the things that Necrozma doesn't like. Necrozma handles Kyogre pretty well, especially if it's a physical one, which we'll get into in a sec. Um, and they both handle Xerneas well until Necrozma Ultra Bursts, uh, and then you can rely more on Groudon. So that was kind of the idea with the first three. To get into the set with uh, Ultra Necrozma, uh, most people are running special right now. Uh, if we take a closer look, um, but I thought that Sunsteel Strike was really nice against Tapu Lele's and Xerneas's almost. Uh, I used it against the Whimsicott as well later, but we'll get into that. Um, but that's about it. And then um, I thought the physical nature of Dustmane, if it doesn't get intimidated, uh, Photon Geyser in Psychic Terrain takes care of a lot of Kyogres in one hit, uh, even though the meta's running really bulky right now with Kyogre. Um, but... It's a really nice way to have instant offense. And uh, if you get intimidated, uh, Photon Geyser will now hit on the special side, um, which is really nice since um, once it ultra bursts, its special attack is going to be really high. Uh, so we have a naive mixed set. Um, so Photon Geyser can hit on the special side um, once intimidated. And Earth Power is really nice for uh, opposing Groudons and Stack Attacka, um, which is really uh, something that can be troublesome for such a fast team that wants to get on so much offense um, so being able to take care of some of those slower pokemon uh, whether you need some chip damage on ground on first 
um, or with stack attack as a case, you know, scouting for any shucka berries uh, that'll help it survive. Um, but Necrozma is uh, just that instant offense and uh, really, really nice to put tons of pressure on the opponent. Um, a lot of times uh, there were other Pokemon that fainted, um, but there were turns of psychic terrain up. Uh, so I was able to basically get a free switch into Necrozma, and that kind of won me a few games. Um, and VGC is a lot about that, where KOing a Pokemon sometimes isn't the right move. Um, sometimes you have to focus on the other team member uh, if, you know, Pokemon's not doing anything at all. Um, and in case with a, such a hyper-offensive team, that can definitely be the case, where you lose one Pokemon, but then are able to pick off two on the next turn. Presumably. So... That's pretty much it with uh, Dustmane. Um, and then, like I said, we paired it with Primal Groudon, which at first I had as a zero speed Groudon to make sure I had weather up. Um, but then I ended up going adamant. Uh, it was originally sassy with zero speed. Uh, it took me forever to soft reset. Um, but I thought that um, being at, you know, 110 plus speed uh, is kind of nice in Tailwind. Uh, we don't have Trick Room. Um, but originally it was supposed to be like the anti-trick room mon on the team since I didn't have one of those uh, and trick room if it gets up is definitely something that can hinder this team a lot um, without too much protect and um, no real slow slow mons um, so you know Groudon's pretty normal here the uh, EVs as you can see are definitely weighted to special uh, and that's just because it's a Xerneas heavy meta. It also lives uh, Menacing Moon Rays Maelstrom from Lunala, uh, which is good. I think even if it's modest, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think that came into play a couple times. So um, pretty normal there. Uh, since I don't have like fake out users or anything, I wouldn't. I probably switch Swords Dance, um, but I did have a fake out user until uh, right before the tournament. Uh, which we'll get into in a sec as the six mon, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Sword Stance is really only there for like if the other partner Pokemon is putting on tons of offensive pressure, and Groudon can get a free Sword Stance off, or if you protect your uh, predict your opponent to go for like a double protect or something. Uh, next up is Tapu Lele, which really brings uh, the team together in being an anti Xerneas team, uh, which we didn't see enough of. Um, Unfortunately, some of the team matchups weren't as uh, standard as I was predicting. Uh, but Magic Room is amazing against Xerneas. Uh, if you can get the Magic Room off before Xerneas, like with the Choice Scarf, um, it uh, doesn't allow it to Geomancy in one turn. Uh, Power Herb can't be used. It's also good against uh, Rayquaza. Uh, it makes it lose its presumably Assault Vest or any other item. Uh, Magic Room, you're probably not going to use against like opposing uh, Primals. Necrozma, uh, Z-Move, Evoltal. Um, you, you want Tabu Lele to be fast in those instances. Um, and even Gengar, uh, you hope to outspeed. Um, there'd be a rare instance where you Magic Room in front of a Gengar. So um, that's kind of the idea there. Um, Dazzling Gleam, we'll get into a second, uh, as part of the strategy to go with Assurance Aerodactyl, um, our little tax collector Aerodactyl. Um, We'll get into Assurance in a second, but basically having some spread, fast spread damage uh, from Tepu Lele and Excelgore is pretty vital to the team in being able to take care of Trick Room teams, uh, or so I thought. Um, so that's pretty much that with Lele. It's very standard. Excelgore, uh, standard Excelgore, but uh, not a standard Pokemon that you see every day. Uh, Excelgore is basically one of the fastest Pokemon imaginable uh, with 145 base speed to begin with and then it gets a burden uh, once you're if you're in terrain um, Excel Gore at 187 HP likes to final gambit that can pick off a lot of Pokemon uh, as you can see my Necrozma dust main is below 187 uh, Rayquaza is almost always going to be under 187 the primals will get over it since they have a lot invested in HP usually 200 plus um, but that's the idea there uh, if you, you can pick off more offensive uh, opponents uh, as well as some walls uh, that could trouble this team otherwise, like stack attack, like Ferrothorn. Um, basically, uh, I was an encyclopedia of HP numbers uh, from this tournament uh, just because 
uh, I've used Excel Gore for a long time, but um, it's really nice to know everything that it can Final Gambit and take out one hit. Uh, try to avoid Focus Hash uh, Mons because Final Gambit won't pick them off entirely. Um, otherwise, uh, Excel Gore, if you let it stay on the field, can be really annoying. You don't always want to protect in front of it because it can encore you. Um, and it can also help uh, some of these uh, Necrozma and Tapulele especially survive things uh, after a struggle bug. Um, acid Spray, not totally important on this team. Really only Tapulele takes advantage of it unless Necrozma has been intimidated. Um, but that's the idea there. Um, if you guys have any questions on how that works, um, let me know. But Final Game, it's a very interesting move that can uh, really throw a wrench in uh, an opponent's plan. Um, they might have all their moves mapped out, except for uh, the, uh, the point that I can make it a 3-on-3 three -three battle whenever I want to from 4-on-4. Four -four. Um, Aerodactyl um, would love to run like 6-plus moves. Uh, its calling card is that it's extremely fast. Easily at speeds the, bit, uh, the Pokemon that get up to 200, like Tapu Koko, Crobat, and Tap, uh, Gengar. Um, it can run really, really fast, so it's not a Pokemon that you would expect to have Assurance. Um, assurance works on this team. I slowed it a little bit down uh, to make sure it does. Assurance works. Uh, it works with Tapu Lele and Excelgore. I was thinking, could I go under Dustman and Necrozma and use Assurance there? <laughs> that would be kind of wild. Um, assurance is typically a move that you see on dark type pokemon uh, in different metas not vgc 19. Uh, you see it on bisharp uh, mostly and you see it on tyranitar so tyranitar uses a scarfed uh, so it's still really fast but it has excadrill uh, which doubles its uh, speed in the sand and then uh, i don't know when bisharp really uses it it's kind of a rare move um, but if you can get like an adrenaline orb bisharp that could work um, with assurance um, so that was kind of the calling card for Aerodactyl to pick off Bronzong, which it can after Dazzling Game chip damage, uh, picks off Lunala, uh, can't pick off Dustmane Necrozma if it stays in that form, um, but yeah, it can basically pick off every Psychic Pokemon besides that, and maybe Cresselia, does a lot of damage to Cresselia, but we didn't see much Cresselia anymore. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. Um, the only problem is that in Tabulele's Psychic Terrain, Aerodactyl can still be faked out since it's off the ground, uh, which is not ideal and came into play uh, in my matches. Um, so I don't know if there's a workaround around that. Um, the utility of Aerodactyl is like really tough to pass up. Um, so you kind of want to overlook that Psychic Terrain weakness and it also slows down under other Scarf Lele's, which is bad. Um, but it can really take a hit. Uh, with these EVs, it can take an Ice Beam from Kyogre, and uh, it takes foul plays really nicely. Um, it, it survives a lot longer than you want, and Groudon really can't do much to it at all on the opposing side. Um, and it has some really nice support moves, Tailwind Taunt. It could run Sky Drop. Um, I was kind of debating between that and Taunt um, in my hotel room the night before. Uh, but I ultimately just stuck with Taunt. Um, but it's something to explore in the future. So that's pretty much that. Uh, Assurance was fun move. I uh, used it in a local tournament against Steven Mia uh, against his Bronzong, and then he beat me like the next four games. But uh, at least I got game one so <laughs> against a really good opponent. Uh, so 14 minutes in, not too bad. Uh, I'll try to... We'll go pretty quickly through the opposing teams. The last one uh, was originally Incineroar at Locals. I realized that with Incineroar, um, it was always the fifth Pokemon that I wanted to bring to a battle, and you can only bring four. Um, and, you know, it usually came down to, like, do I bring Incineroar or Groudon? And, you know, usually I'm going to bring a Groudon. Uh, it has better stats. It can hit hard. Um, Incineroar is a little too passive for my team uh, since I want to win within, like, the first five moves or so. Um, so it didn't really make sense. Um, I had a big weakness to Tapu Fini since it can switch in on Lele or it can lead against Lele. Um, and so then I was looking at like things like Kurtana. Uh, I thought about Cherum, uh, a lot of grass types. And I realized that the Veltal and Kyogre matchup could also be important and having electric type might be better. Um, so the first thought was obviously Togemaru has a lot of supporting moves. Uh, then when I took a look at Zerka Tree, it has a lot of really cool moves. 
Uh, I think it might be underutilized. Uh, its ability and beast boost uh, can be devastating. Late game, it can get out of hand, especially if you have an offensive Pokemon next to it, like Groudon. Um, it's like the opposing team has no idea who to target down anymore because they're both huge threats. Um, so basically, I focus sashed it to make sure it can live any Z moves and any Groudon moves, anything like that. Uh, I want to make sure that I get gravity up for Groudon. In my local tournament, I missed like six Precipice Blades or seven. And, uh, you know, it decided some games. I mean, that's what Precipice Blades is. So I kind of wanted to run gravity. Um, and then when you see that <laughs> circuitry also gets hypnosis, uh, it's really nice. You know, Bronzog makes use of the gravity hypnosis idea uh, or the Z Trick Room hypnosis idea, uh, either one. And um, it really makes it tough for opponents uh, when... Uh, you can get that off, put things to sleep, and uh, it, can, it can really make a game go out of control. And so when Zerkatry was in for my team, uh, won I think three out of four battles, and uh, in one of them it got up to like plus four special attack because uh, it KO'd one of my Pokemon and then like three of the opponent's Pokemon. And then in the other battles it was definitely an important Pokemon and started getting beast boost towards the end, uh, either before uh, a forfeit or before it got knocked out. Um, so that's the idea there. Zap Cannon's kind of just a crazy idea for me. I, I should probably run Thunderbolt, but um, Zap Cannon can probably pick up a, f a couple KOs that uh, Thunderbolt couldn't like on Tapu Fini from full health. Not that I need that all the time, but uh, cool to have the extra power. Um, if you run Gravity, uh, then the benefit of Zap Cannon paralyzing everything might go out the window if Tapu Fini's terrain is up. Um, but usually... I kept Tapu Lele in the back to allow me to hypnosis, to allow me to zap can and get the paralysis. Um, but discharge is a move that most people can't handle. Uh, it gets around lightning round users and uh, is really just really scary. So uh, Zerkatry is the Pokemon that I think other people could actually make use of, uh, where the rest of my team might not be great and Aerodactyl is kind of gimmicky uh, and good for like a game one situation. Um, and the others are kind of well-known. Zerkatry is something that I think uh, more players should actually take a look at. Uh, anything with Beast Boost can be made pretty good. Uh, even, you know, Focus Punch, uh, what's it called? What's that big fighting bug thing? Uh, Buzzwool. So, um, yeah, uh, if you guys have any other questions on my team, please feel free to let me know. And like I said, the QR code is uh, going to be on screen and uh, in the description below. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look at the opponent's teams. Uh, we had seven rounds, and basically to top cut, you need to go six and one basically all the time. Uh, and then to uh, guarantee CP, you need to go five and two. Uh, the top like six or eight, uh, four and three players got CP as well, and that was what I ended up with. Um, but that's because I really got off to a good start, and all my opponents were really world caliber players. Uh, which is going to happen at a regional. Um, but we'll just uh, jump into Patrick's team. Um, so Patrick has, you know, some of the most CP in North America. Uh, he's played a ton this year. Um, and uh, going into this event, he's beaten me before in locals. Um, you know, drawing him round one is definitely not ideal uh, situation. And then I saw his team and it was wild. Um, so it took me like a full minute and a half of the team preview to even understand like what I'm going to do to this. Um, and it took me like 45 seconds to realize he only had one restricted. Um, and he was saying before the, the battle to me and other people like, uh, you know, this team could really work or it's really not going to work. And, um, you know, I think uh, having the only one, the rest one restricted, I think he could have had two, and I think it might have actually played out a lot better. Um, so he has Zekrom as his restricted, Tapu Fini, Mega Gengar, Landris, Therian, Dugong, and Incineroar. So this is a Parish Trap team with Gengar, and then Dugong as the cleanup Parish Song user at the end of the game. Uh, double Intimidate, pretty scary. I would have replaced Tapu Fini with Kyogre. I think that's like an obvious change that can make this team better. Um, but it, it's a scary team. Um, he did not bring Zekrom, so I didn't see a restricted in both games, uh, which was kind of crazy. Uh, Tapu Fini uh, was brought game one. It didn't lead, but um, I brought Zerkatree to that one, and then uh, he 
he I figured he'd pivot to Landris T instead of Feeney in the second game, which he did. Uh, and I did not bring Zerka Tree, so uh, it wasn't quite as good as he would have hoped for. But Landris was able to pick up a knockout, I believe, in game two. Um, so yeah, basically the idea is to get the Parish Song off with Gengar uh, in the first three turns, knock out two of my Pokemon, then Dugong does the rest. Um, but in game one, he needed a triple protect from Dugong at the end of the game to have a chance. Uh, and I think he got two and didn't get the third. And then the third game is basically the same situation. He didn't go for the protect the first turn, uh, which made it so that uh, light that burns the sky through protect with KO. So double protect wasn't a win condition for him. Um, so he forfeited there. Um, you know, definitely a weird team. I don't know if he found this from like a Japanese player or something, um, but it's kind of crazy. Uh, if you're not prepared for it, it can definitely run you over. Um, so... Uh, second round, I faced another local that seems to be a, a very um, very common theme for at least the first four rounds. So I've played Sohi before uh, in locals, and we had a great set. I kind of learned from him that Tapu Fini was a huge weakness, uh, a, a, huge, a great Pokemon against my team. Um, obviously, when you take a quick look at his team, Crobat is an obvious to not bring against Psychic Spam and Aerodactyl. <laughs> and... Um, he didn't bring Xerneas either game, which I think actually makes sense against my team. My team looks great against Xerneas, um, but there's not really much he could do uh, offensively. Um, and having the tech of Zerkatry really uh, mess with him when I ha uh, from when I had Incineroar and Locals. Uh, so game two was kind of important. He had uh, Feeny and Incin, which uh, was a common lead for him. And I've seen him double switch a few times. Uh, in the past, and for him it really works a lot of times, and I had Zerkid read Groudon, um, and so it seems like a very swift switch to go into Landorus for Quaza, but I gravitied and uh, Precipice Blades didn't worry about potential fake out, um, so I was able to hit both of his flying Pokemon, uh, get some damage off, and that chip damage definitely mattered, um, and once I got the Rayquaza out of the picture, uh, there's not a ton of offensive pressure he can do. Um, that's kind of why I like facing Feeny, um, in that you can leave it for last and, you know, you can win off that. So if you can get three Pokemon out of the way before Feeny can light screen and icy wind and heal pulse um, and do any of that stuff, if it, can, if it just doesn't have any partners to play with, you can take advantage and win there. Um, so that was a 2-0, but I just had the matchup in my favor. Um, so I believe Jonathan's also a local. Uh, I haven't faced him though. And this was a really cool team and a really good matchup. I faced this team twice and I lost both times in game threes, um, which was kind of unfortunate. Since after playing it six times, I kind of understood what, what they were going for. So basically this team is not going to bring Salamence or um, Tapu Fini against my team. They're going to go with the other four. They could bring Fini. Um, but they don't really need to. And my strategy of a Dazzling Gleam Assurancing isn't going to work when Persian can fake out my um, my Aerodactyl. And there's really not another way for me to pressure and uh, negate fake out at the same time. Um, and in my game later, I was able to figure out that Groudon Zerkatry is kind of a nice lead um, and... Um, can really pressure Lunala, even though it can't KO it in one turn. Um, it's doing a lot of damage, forcing it to wide guard, which can waste Trick Room turns. Um, all while is very good against Jonathan. I was able to win game two, um, mostly in part to a miss from all while and play rough on Aerodactyl. It probably had a pretty big impact on the game. Um, and then in game three, it came down to um, my two restrict. Uh, we traded restricteds uh, right in the second to last turn and then we had necrozma versus uh, mega mawile left i think both were at full health and um i figured that earth power had a chance to ko and uh, we both figured that it was a roll i got it into the red and it lived was able to hit its play rough and ko um so it was unfortunate but um not the end of the world uh it was a really good set so i mean what else can you ask for so um, yeah, uh, next up was round four against James Evans. Uh, he was coming off stream um, the round before, 
and obviously he's a really good player, uh, another local uh, to New Jersey, and um, had a really scary team. Um, basically, he did not bring Salamence or Ensign um, either game, I believe. He better bring brought Ensign game too. Um, my notes weren't great, but he brought Necrozma Lele both um, both times to lead, um, and I feel like. Um, I feel like my team does really well against that since uh, Aerodactyl can pressure with Assurance. He switched out on it. He, I guess he knew it was coming. Uh, or he had heard from somebody at a local or had seen it or something. But uh, Or Necrozma just wasn't doing anything there. Um, so that was unfortunate I wasn't able to win game one off of that. But um, it was a fairly quick 2-0. Uh, it really came down to being able to get Groudon in. Um, and not letting his Ferrothorn be too much of an issue uh, to the team, um, and making sure that like Groudon survived to take out Ferrothorn. Um, so yeah, that was a really good uh, set for two games, and uh, kind of a really big confidence booster uh, for sure. Uh, round five was against Jake Powell, another Necrozma. Um, the Greninja is very interesting. Um, it's not Scarf since Lele is probably Scarf here, um, but it can still map block. It wasn't brought against my team since there's a lot of Pokemon that are faster than it, so map block doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, but he was able to lead stack Lele both times, and I guess I just didn't have anything for it, or I don't know. He was a really good player. Obviously, he's a world's caliber player, but um, I just didn't wasn't able to get into the game on this one. Uh, I was always on the back foot, and uh, he was able to, able to take advantage. Keeping his Dawn Wings in Dawn Wings form and not Ultra Bursting it uh, definitely helped him out and gave him the advantage uh, over Duskmane in this battle. Um, yeah. Wasn't able to take advantage of Aerodactyl in this one, even though looking back, it probably looks pretty good. Um, then this was a really interesting one against Kevin Brown. Um, he has two Pokemon that look awful against my team, Como and Crobat. Um, and he, so he brought the other four every single time. Uh, game one, I didn't realize how important Tailwind would be. Whimsicott was able to get it up, and he was able to win that way. Uh, he, he let Kang Whimsicott every single time. Um, and then I ended up bringing Lele in future battles. Uh, it was a bad matchup for him, for sure. Um, but... Uh, I was able to match Tailwind with Aerodactyl game two. And then game three, he focused uh, Moonblast, du uh, Double Edge, Fake Out, yeah, all of that onto Aerodactyl and was able to KO it. And game two was a roll and I lived. Able to get Tailwind up. Uh, game three, it didn't work out that way. Um, but Whimsica, I don't think had Endeavor, so it wasn't as pressuring as it could be. Um, and was able to focus on like Kang and his things in the back. Uh, Groudon and Zern um, to uh, survive Tailwind, live it, and then uh, win after that. So I was scared that once in Tailwind he'd get Xerneas up to speed and just win. Um, so I probably feel a little lucky for that one, even though I should have won it easier just based on matchup. Um, he played really well. And then like I said, I played Alvin in game seven, uh, who had the same team as Jonathan. And it came down uh, pretty close again. Game two, I was able to win with circuitry. Uh, and then game three, he, um, even though he brought Lunala Persian every single time, he was able to adapt uh, to circuitry the second time um, and make sure that he got his crowd on out early and uh, make sure that circuitry just couldn't run rampant on his team. Um, so yeah, as you can kind of tell, like people brought the same kind of stuff against me since usually at least one of their Pokemon looks god awful against my team. Um, that's kind of the idea, um, which makes it easier for me to kind of play around. Um, and I probably should have been able to adapt a little quicker, especially against, um, the, the same team that I saw twice. Um, I wish I had at least won one of those. Um, so yeah, that was my team. I finished four and three and that was good for 28th or 29th overall. Might've been tied for 28th, um, at least in the first opponent's win call. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to get ROM hacks out there more often now. Uh, I might try to get to 100 CP uh, or 150 ideally uh, with the online challenge and any locals before June. And if I'm able to get to 150, I'll definitely go to Ohio. I would need a top eight 
uh, in the international, which would be very tough, but I have a team in mind that I think could be pretty good, um, which will be much more standard than this. And um, if I get to 100, I might consider going if I can find like a good carpool. Um, so if you're in the area, if I've faced you before, if you're a viewer and want to carpool to Ohio, let me know and uh, hopefully we can make it happen. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you enjoy playing with the team, uh, Battle Spotter on Showdown, let me know. Uh, it's kind of a wild team, but uh, yeah, thank you guys. Hope you have a nice night and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.